Hi, in this video I'll show you how to make a simple switch mode power supply which will allow you to have an adjustable output voltage from about 1 to 120 volts DC. The power output is at least to 50 watts, although it can easily get up to 350 watts with just minor modifications. The circuit is intended to be powered from a 12 volt source. The whole circuit is as shown. It's based on the TL494 PWM IC. It comes in a 16 pin dual line package and all the pinouts and the various connections are as shown. Basically what it does is that it will take in the low voltage DC of about 12 volts and it will step it up to a higher voltage DC and also it can step it down to a much lower DC. The output is continually adjustable from 1 to 120 volts and there is feedback for regulation. So pin 12 of the IC is VCC and it's connected to the input power supply through the diode D4. It's 1N4007. The capacitor C6 will filter and stabilize the voltage supply to the IC. I'll share with you all the parts list for the project. You'll need to connect pin 13 to pin 14. Pin 14 will generate 5 volts when the IC is powered and the ground is pin 7 connected to ground as shown. To make the IC oscillate, you'll need a capacitor C1 and a resistor 1. These are the timing capacitor and resistors respectively. The value is 1 nanofarad and 5.1 kilo ohms for an output frequency of about 98 kilohertz. If you want 50 kilohertz, just increase R1 to 10 kilo ohms. A higher frequency will allow you to obtain more power from a smaller transformer. You can also use 50 kilohertz, but I will show you just the modifications that you make. When you connect pin 13 to pin 14, the output transistors will be set as a push-pull driver which is what we want in this case. The AC has two internal air amplifiers with input pins as 1 and 2 and 15 and 16 respectively. This can allow you to alter the output duty cycle or pass wind and affect the final output voltage. Whenever the non-inverting input voltage is higher than the inverting input, the output duty cycle will be lowered and vice versa. There is also a dead time control pin form and this can also allow you to adjust the output pass wind or completely disable the outputs. When the voltage input at the then time pin 4 exceeds 3.3 volts, the output will be completely disabled. This will be for overcurrent protection. Connect pin 3 to pin 2 through the resistor 2 and the capacitor C2 as shown for basic compensation. The first the amplifier, I'll be using it for output voltage regulation and the second one, I've not used it so I have disabled it by putting up the inverting input to a voltage above 0 volts and pulling down the non-inverting input P16 to ground. The feedback to pin 2 of the first the amplifier is a voltage of about 0 0.9 to 1 volts and is set by the resistor divider network made up of R5 and R3 as shown. This will set a voltage of about 1 volts here and pin 2 as shown. And so any input voltage to pin 1 that exceeds 1 volts will alter the output pass wind and allow the AC to accurately regulate the output voltage. The output transistors have the open correctors as pin 8 and 11. And in this case I have pulled them up to VCC and I'll be using the open emitters E1 and E2 which are pin 9 and 10 as shown in an emitter for our circuit. As I had mentioned earlier, this circuit is set as a push-pull driver and so the output transistors of the IC will be alternating meaning when one is on, the other one is off and vice versa. So you'll have two square wave output signals at E1 and E2 which will be on at different times. Let's assume in the first stage you have a high output at pin 9 or the first transistor you conduct and you have a low output at pin 10 or the second transistor is disabled. So the resistor 7 will pull down the gate of the transistor K2 to ground and because it's a PNP transistor this will turn on and pull down the gate of the MOSFET K4 to ground through the resistor 9 as shown. This will ensure that the MOSFET Q4 remains off. But because you have a high pass here, the diode 1 will be forward biased and the gate of the MOSFET Q3 
will be pulled up to a voltage that is almost equal to VCC of 12 volts and the MOSFET will conduct. The transistor Q1 will be off because it's PNP and it's a high voltage at its base. When Q3 conducts, now you have a current path flow from the input positive supply of 12 volts through the left hand side of the primary winding through the MOSFET Q3 through the current sensing resistor L10 and the negative rail or ground as shown. This is the first half cycle. In the next stage now you have the first output transistor of the IC disabled and the second one on. So you have a low output at pin 9 and a high pass output at pin 10. When this happens, the resistor L6 will pull down the base of the transistor Q1 to ground causing it to turn on and this will pull down the gate of the MOSFET Q3 to ground or the negative rail as shown through the resistor R8 causing Q3 to turn off. Because you have a high pass at pin 10, now D2 is for unbiased and the gate of the MOSFET Q4 will be pulled up to a voltage almost equal to VCC of 12 volts. So the MOSFET Q4 will now turn on. The PNP transistor Q2 will be off because its base is pulled up to about 12 volts. When Q4 now conducts, now you have a current path flow from the input positive supply through the right hand side of the primary winding as shown, through the MOSFET Q4, through the current sensing resistor L10 and to ground as shown. This is the second half cycle and this will complete one oscillation. Then the process will repeat 90,000 times per second. The MOSFETs, I have used the IRLZ46. These are high current per MOSFET with a drain source voltage rating of 65 volts and a current handling capacity of 46 amperes, which is quite more than what we need. You can use any MOSFET that can safely handle more than 30 amperes. The IRLZ44 should also work well. The gate resistors R8 and R9 are 47 ohms and rated for at least 1 watt. For the diodes D2 and D1 are high frequency diodes, you can use the 1N914 or just any other diode which can handle high frequency and a current of at least 300 milliamps. So you have now an alternating current and voltage on the primary side of the transformer and this will reduce voltage on the secondary side of the transformer. The turns ratio between the primary and the secondary is 2 turns on each half and 25 turns on each half of the secondary side. The transformer is a ferrite power transformer. I'll get to the specs in a moment. In the first case, if you have a positive on this line, the right hand side of the diode D3 will conduct and this will allow current to flow through it through the inductor L1 and change the output capacity 3 and power any load connected on the output side. On the second half cycle, this sign now goes high and the left hand side of the down debris conducts and allows current to go through it through the inductor 1 and to the output load and to turn the output capacitor C3. C3 will stabilize the output voltage. The inductor 1 is for limiting the initial rush current used to change the bulk capacitor C3. C3 is an electrolytic capacitor written for 220 microfarads and at least 200 volts. The higher the capacitance, the better. If you choose for a different output voltage range, ensure the voltage rating of the capacitor C3 is about twice the maximum voltage that you want. Ensure the inductor L3 that you use can handle peak currents of more than 10 amperes. You can easily salvage this from almost any switch mode power supplies. They are the output filtering inductors which can be wired on ferrite torrents or iron pounded torrents. The diode D3 is a high frequency short key diode. You can use the MPL2200. It's written for a reverse breakdown voltage of 200 volts and a maximum peak current of 20 amperes. This is exactly what we need for this project. The output voltage can be set by adjusting the potentiometer V1 and the setup made up of R14, RV1 and R13 is a potential divider network which will allow you to adjust the output voltage from 1 to about 120 volts. The potentiometer is 100 kilo ohms and the high and low signed voltage limiting resistors R13 and R14 are 1 kilo ohms each. All these are written for at least half a watt although a quarter watt will be okay. For the current sense, 
The resistor 10 is about 20 milliohms and ensure it's written for 315 watts. So whenever the current flowing through the output to MOSFETs and through the current sense resistor 10 exceeds about 25 amperes, the voltage drop on this resistor will be about 0.65 volts. And this is connected to the gate of the first transistor Q5. This will cause it to turn on. When this happens, you have the gate of the second transistor Q6 pulled down to ground ensuring that it turns off. And so you have 5 volts flowing through the resistor R12 and to the end time control pin 4. When this pin is pulled up to a voltage above 3.3 volts, the output duty cycle or pass wind is completely disabled. This will ensure that the transistors do not switch and so the current on the primary side of the transformer is cut off. This will act as a short circuit protection in case there is a short circuit on the secondary side or prevent of a current in case you have a heavy round on the secondary side. And the 5 volts here is from the 5 volts reference pin 14 of the IC as shown. For the transformer, this is a ferrite power transformer. These are usually the black cord transformers found in many switch mode power supplies. You can easily salvage one from an old ATX computer power supply or a spoiled switch mode power supply. For 250 watts, you should have no problems finding a suitable comb. If you want to buy one, the core for about 250 watts is the ETD44 core. But if you salvage one, ensure that the core area should be at least 1.5 cm squared. The bigger the better. With a bigger core, you can obtain power of up to 300 watts with just a minor modification of the current sensing resistor at 10. For the primary winding, it's made up of two halves of two turns, and for a frequency of about 100 kHz, you will need to use enamel or magnet copper wire of gauge that is six, and ensure that you parallel at least 20 strands of those to every handle more than 25 amperes on the primary side. On the secondary side, ensure that you parallel at least 5 strands of those. This will depend on the maximum current that you want on the secondary side. The secondary side is made up of 2 halves of 25 turns each. These are some of the specifications for the transformer, the inductum, the transistors you need, the IC is PL494, the resistors value and the resistor number, the capacitors, C3, C5 and C6 are electrolytic, the rest are ceramic film capacitors and the various voltage ratings are shown and the diodes.